be showing you how to make your very own homemade print paint. So stay tuned. Okay, so first, let's get into the materials that you're going to be needing to complete this project. First things first, some safety. Um, make sure you have a pair of safety glasses because you are going to be working with power tools if you choose to do so and you don't want anything harmful getting into your eyes. So, safety first. So next you're going to need a design for your crankbait. This little template I modeled after one of my favorite lures by H2O Express that you can find at Academy. It's just a two inch square bill crankbait. I made some renditions of my own on the computer printed it out and that's what I use for my template. From there, you're just going to uh, trace that template onto a piece of wood of your choice. This is a little section of poplar wood that I got at Lowe's and it comes in about a two foot section for just a few dollars and with this one piece you can make quite a few, uh, quite a few crankbaits. From there, you will need some kind of sandpaper or a sanding block. You want a nice smooth finish, that way you make sure that it moves nice and um, fluid in the water. Next, I bought these small little screw eyes that will screw into the wood and these split rings that attach to the screw eyes. These I bought in bulk on eBay and they were only a few bucks for quite a few of them. After you attach the screw eyes and the split rings to the, to the screw eye, then you're going to attach your hooks onto the split ring. I use size 6 treble hooks by Gamamatsu. These usually never let me down. I've caught some really large bass using these hooks. I've even caught some redfish and some trout and uh, they hold up to the salt water pretty well. Now they are about 6 bucks for a pack of 12 and if you don't want to spend that much, then you can get these laser uh, sharp by Eagle Claw and this comes in a larger quantity. There's 20 of them for a few dollars and if you're fishing mostly freshwater, this is a good choice too. Of course, you're going to need a Sharpie, a pencil, a pen, a carpenter's pencil, something, anything to trace your design onto the wood so that you can continue on with these steps. And once you have your design, Onto the wood, you're going to need a device to cut it. I use my Dremel 200. You can use any rotary device, a jigsaw, a table saw, but I like to use my Dremel. Fits well in the hand, it's easy to maneuver, and uh, it does the job. So you're going to need a cutting device, and my Dremel came with some attachments that I use to help sand the finished product. I also use these little drill bits from Harbor Freight to help screw and uh, get the screw eyes going into the lure and into the lip. Now, speaking of the lips and the bills to your crankbait, you are going to need some kind of plastic. You can even use metal, but I found this little sheet at Lowe's and it is one of the more expensive materials on the list. I wanna say it was about anywhere from eight to $10 and it came in about a one and a half foot squared section. Now with that though, you can make a lot of uh, lips for your crankbait, so just keep that in mind. So although it was a little more on the pricey side, um, you can make quite a few with that. So from here guys, let's get into the step-by-step -step process and I'll make this as easy as possible so that you can start making your own lures. Okay, so I'm using my Dremel tool here to cut my piece of poplar wood into a smaller workable section. Once I cut off this section, I am then going to cut it in half down the middle lengthwise. And that way I will have two pieces to work with and I can make two crankbaits. Then once you have the pieces cut in half, you're going to want to take your template or your design and trace it onto the piece of wood. I used a Dremel attachment 
to wear the wood down pretty quickly to the design that I traced. And then from here, I'm just using a sanding block to get the finish that I'm going to want to be using in the water. Now here I'm just taking my Dremel and making a small incision into the front or nose of the crankbait. And this is where I am going to be placing the lip of my crankbait. Now you want to be careful here because if you do not make the right cut, it will definitely affect the way your crankbait swims. I'm doing more of a straight cut here because I don't want my crankbait to dive too deep. If you do want it to dive a little deeper, then you might want to make your cut at an upward angle so that the lip faces down. Then I'm just tracing the design of the lip. And I usually like to start with a wider pattern and then I cut it out from there. And you can always make changes. You can do test swims on your lure. And once you get the uh, action that you want, then you can finalize it. But I usually start wider, then I sand it down to uh, make sure it has nice smooth edges. And if I don't like the way it's swimming then, I'll use my Dremel to change the shape of it. And here I'm just fitting it into the cut that I made to make sure that it's going to fit properly. I'm using the attachments to my Dremel so that I can find the right size to um, make a guide hole into the crankbait. And that way I can screw in the screw eyes and they will have a nice secure snug uh, fit. You don't want to use too big of a guide hole because then your screw eyes aren't going to have a strong set. And after making those guide holes, you just screw in the screw eyes. Here I've attached the one under the underbelly and the back. So here you can see that I have a screw eye in the bill. I have a screw eye on the underbelly of the crankbait and a screw eye, if my camera would focus, on the tail of the crankbait. Now, one uh, material I forgot to mention is that you're going to need some kind of adhesive or a super glue. I like to use Gorilla Glue to keep the bill fastened into the wood and just to secure a stronger bond. Just keep that in mind. I forgot to mention that. And right now, I am going to set the bill into my crank. And then once that is all uh, set and dry, you can begin the painting process and attachments of the split rings along with the hooks. And then you're pretty much done. So I hope you guys enjoy watching this. We have a couple more steps to complete and then we'll look at the final product. And I'll also do a test swim of the lure in my swimming pool so you can see the action that it has and the way that it moves. Now, one thing I forgot to mention on the supply list is wood filler. You can see that I put some wood filler there at the nose of the crankbait just to fill in any of those gaps that I made with my Dremel. Also, right here, I realized that I'm going to want a little more weight on my bait. So I just made a little mark with a marker and drilled a hole that allowed me to place a weight in the uh, chest area of the crankbait. Using wood filler, you can just plug up that hole, wait for it to dry, and then you can sand it down for a smooth finish. Here are some of the colors that I went with for this crankbait. And as you can see, some simple nail polish, y'all. I like to color the bottom of my cranks red. I seem to get more strikes that way. And a little helpful hint, spread a small layer of super glue on the top of the crank and sprinkle the glitter on that and you'll get a nice good stick. I colored the side profile green and I call this color copper bass. Some nail hardener is a good protective coat and it'll keep your crank uh, in the water for a long time. I also made some changes to the lip. I ended up rounding the edges and I relocated the screw eye from the lip to the face or nose of the crankbait and got some really good action from it. Here's another look of the crankbait from the side. It came out pretty nice. 
From there, I attached the split rings and the hooks. And here are a couple others that I made or a couple other designs that I need to finish. Here's one last look before I test it out in the water. Hey guys, so the next thing you want to do is test out your lure. Uh, fortunately, I have a pool in my backyard, so I'm able to do this. Uh, if not, just take it to a local pond or a canal or something, anywhere, any water system close to your house. Uh, you can even test it in a bathtub if your bathtub is large enough. And right now, this lure is performing exactly the way I wanted it to. I wanted to create a shallow diving crankbait. It could even work as a wake bait. If I reel it very slow, then it only dives about half a foot just below the surface. If I give it a nice hard crank, this thing is diving about two feet below the surface. So I'm really happy with that. And with the weight insert in the nose of this crankbait, it has a real nice um, suspending action as well. Or a real slow rise, I should say, to the surface which is just awesome. I mean, you can rip this thing and then pause and allow it, allow it to slowly float back up to the surface. Sometimes you'll get those strikes as your lure is coming back up to the surface. Uh, I've had bass rip these lures like a little torpedo as it's rising up. So I'm very pleased with the action of this crankbait. I hope you all are pleased with this video. I try to make it as simple as possible with easy steps for you to follow. If you have any more questions on how to make a crankbait or the supplies or what to buy, just please leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And as always guys, thanks for watching Fishing with JC. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe if you have not already. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Fishing with JC and I always appreciate your all support. So peace, love, and fish on.